Welcome back to New Am San Marino, the podcast for creatives. Welcome, citizen. It's, it's Flobo Voice, the mayor, and I'm hanging out in the mayor's office with someone who can really beat me up. But I mean that in the most respectful possible way ever. She is an MMA fighter and a boxer as well. Please give it up for Hollow Point, Jane Harding. How you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. You know, it's it's the end, beginning of the year. Got my whole goals laid out. I want to be able to to get my stamina up. I want to go back to doing half marathons. You know, trying to get all healthy. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. great. That's really good goals for the year. Yeah, but let's talk about the year. I mean, we survived 2020, and we all have our own mixed bag opinions about it. Some people think it's the worst year ever. I quite disagree. Um, I know with with you and what you do, you were affected like pretty much like <laughs> directly. How did 2020 affect you and your craft and your fighting as well? Yeah, I guess the main thing definitely would have been international travel, something that I really rely on to compete and to um, to obviously fight and do what I do. Um, so it was kind of hard, I guess, like one, to earn money and two, just to compete and progress. Like I really do love fighting um, money aside. So it was just sort of um, at the beginning of the year, I was matched up to fight in London. Um, it was going to be on the main card. It was going to be like a really good matchup for me. Um, everything felt like it was like moving forward. And then obviously COVID hit and it kind of got scrapped and it was just sort of like okay now we need to find like a new direction and and figure out what we're going to do from here so um i guess like as much as it did affect me and like you're saying like it wasn't the worst year in the world i still got to get some things done and i'm lucky that um of all the sports combat sports did really well like last year and i was still pretty active um, and I'm glad, yeah, like a lot of those team sports and stuff kind of got put on hold or whatever it may be. So, yeah, I still got to fight at least, but I couldn't travel as much as I would have liked to, that's for sure. Did you pick up any hobbies or any uh, other interests in the time down, downtime? Um, I, I guess I just like dabbled in a lot of things. Like I did like punch embroidery. I, um, I made okay. my own ginger beer from scratch. I like, um, yeah, I did yeah. random little bits and pieces. I guess I like got into more baking and kind of like whole foods and stuff. And then, um, I just like home workouts are obviously a big thing cause all the gyms were closed for a little bit there. So yeah, I guess that kind of like created like new little sparks. And, um, I think it really like gave me a much better, one big thing that I took away from 2020 is I had a much better relationship with food, which is really cool. <laughs> I think like since I wasn't cutting weight all the time and I wasn't like like depressed and then binging and then like suppressing myself and then binging, like going through those things, um, yeah. I uh, kind of just was like, okay, like the novelty of junk food is gone. So I have to either cook or um, like just stay a little bit healthier and just have a little bit more of a lifestyle around food rather than it being like binging and up and down. Yeah, you mentioned baking. What's the uh, one dish that's like now your signature, like your go-to? Um, I would say I, well, I did a lot of like cookies and stuff last year. So yeah, probably like cookies would be like the, Oh gee, some of them are healthier than others. Like my mom has a really good recipe um, that's like half a tin of condensed milk and <laughs> that's delicious. But then of course, like every now and again, I was making kind of like a little bit more like oat kind of cookies, but yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I take you back to, you make the inciting incident. You know, you decided that, that fighting is something you want to do and it mm -hmm. takes a, a, a different kind of person to want to risk being punched in the face. I know I couldn't do it, you know, not from New York, you know. Yeah. Uh, did, did your neck work instantly jump on board with this they saw that like fighting you before or would they take some convincing like how did you pitch to, to your friends and family like yeah this is what i want to do in my life i guess it, it was for a lot of people it was more of a surprise definitely it wasn't like i um i like wasn't really that aggressive of a kid like i never really got into street fights i wasn't like getting into fights at school or whatever i wasn't it wasn't really um, anything like that, but I guess I was really sporty and I tried a lot of different hobbies and stuff. And I think for that reason, um, I tried a lot of team sports and things like that. And so when I fell on martial arts originally for karate, I think um, it just sort of like made sense that I kind of progressed through um, to MMA, like when I wanted something that was a little bit more challenging. And then once I was doing MMA, I was sort of like, okay, well, I would like to figure out if I'm actually any good at this. Because like, I guess like the main thing was that I'm, 
I'm very naturally talented at like most things. Mm-hmm. So it was sort of like, just because you're good at this doesn't doesn't mean that you got to be good at fighting for one. Just because you're good at training, and right. two, like, um, I guess it's just good to sort of like figure out if this is like something that's giving you passion rather than just like something that you're good at in a sense. So um, I was really lucky um, that I had such a great gym that I started off with, and I guess once I decided to start fighting and it went really well, and I um, just kind of went from there. Everybody sort of jumped on board as like. Um, supportive, I guess, for it because they were like, okay, now we know that she's been training since she was in school. Now I finished school, I had my first fight, it kind of progressed from there. Like it was a slow unfolding journey, I find. Yeah. And um, for that reason, everyone was just like, yeah, cool. Like it's something, if it's something that you love, then, then we'll support you through it. And, and yeah, it kind of, I'm, I guess I'm glad it worked out to a certain but, point. And it worked out in spades. I mean, there's a thing <laughs> where we, we, we start out something and we, we know we have talent. Like my, my background is comedy and I will never compare stand-up comedy to fighting, but there's a lot of parallels as far as like there is natural talent, there's training, there's rehearsal, but is that decision night or month where we decide, okay, do I like doing it for fun? Is it a hobby? Is it a career? I mean, how did that work? Was that a totally internal discussion? Did you have a team you kicked it to? Was it like, yo, mom, dad, are you with me on this? Like, like that yeah. moment to go full on pro, I guess, in this instance. Um, it was because it was somewhat of a hobby. Like, it was a hobby through school and stuff. And I never really, I'm a woman went in the UFC and stuff like that. So it wasn't really something that I considered to be a career option at the beginning. And I guess because I was going through school and everything and everybody asks you to go to university, what we call college and um, like what we call university is college. And and then like we, I guess someone just sort of was like, is this going to be a hobby or a career? And I was just like, nobody had really asked me that question or kind of opened up my eyes to see that as an option. So I think once, once they did, and once I was just like, okay, well, this is what I love. Like I don't, there wasn't any real subjects in school that I was like super passionate about or that I could see myself doing for the rest of my life. Um, and then I was constantly going to the gym and, and, and training MMA with all my friends and, and doing everything that I loved. And I was like, okay, this is what's kind of igniting my spark. So maybe I can make a career out of it. And um, I guess since there was a lot of unknown at the beginning with opportunities or directions or um, the ability to really make something of it because of the limit in female MMA at the time. Right. Um, it just sort of like evolved in its own. Like once I had decided, all right, like if I can make a career of this, I'm going to make a career of this. And then once I did that, I kind of like progressed on and, and yeah, and went from there. So it sort of like was like an unfolding thing. And it was just something like that I decided, okay, like if I love this, hopefully I can make a career out of this. And I love it enough to make the sacrifices to do so. And, and I'm lucky enough that, yeah, it kind of worked out. And obviously during that time, Muna in the UFC and Bellator, et cetera, et cetera. So there's so much more openings and opportunities now than there was when I started. And, and your network is there with you now. They're all about it. They're all in. Or do you get, yeah. do you get some dissent now? Do people still try to throw some shade at you for doing it? Or Oh, yeah. And like, especially at the beginning, um, it was a lot of like, even not even directly to me, but people would say to my mom or whatever, like, why, like, why is she trying to do that? That's not, it's not going to work out. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, she should go to university or like, go with, I guess, like, just a cookie cutter square, solid and safe path. But um, I guess just like constantly like hearing that was just more motivation um, Mm -hmm. than anything. And just people being like, oh, like, why didn't you go to uni or why didn't you do uni as well as train and fight and stuff like that? Um, and like, there was a few reasons, but the main one would be because there was nothing that I was passionate enough about that, like that compared to my passion that I have for MMA. So therefore why not put all my eggs in one basket? I was young when I started fighting, I was 18. Um, so even if I had failed, I would have still popped out at, I don't know, you know, like 25, 26, where I am now, I can still go to university now. I can still study can still change my career path. People are doing that all the time, whether or not they gambled on a dream or not. But I think um, I think just having that kind of in the background was like a big motivator. And then those people that I knew were for me and, and kind of had my back were 100% supportive. So it was just sort of like the balance of both and um, con- contrasting it and, and choosing like, okay, cool. Like this is a bit of a niche and it's not necessarily like the norm path, but yeah. I'm going to give it everything I can and hopefully I love it enough to for it to like work out in itself. And I feel like the universe and me manifesting what I needed to do and it all worked out and here we yeah. are. And like, and now I guess now is the 
the shitty part where everyone wants to jump on board and uh, like, <laughs> right. I supported her from the start and you're just like, right. no, like, no. Like, I remember you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's very similar because my parents are from the West Indies, uh, also British Commonwealth. So there's a lot of like cultural similarities where it's like, no, you, you go, you go, they say university too. You go to university and then you get yeah. a normal job. My, my mom's a nurse. My dad is an electrical engineer. I left to do uh, video editing, film editing, and I came into stand-up comedy. And it's always those things where there's that balance the uh, old world has, where it's like, we're, we're your family, we support you, but fall back on something. And I guess yeah, I'm in my exactly. mid-30s now, and you're like, there was nothing to fall back on. I have unemployed lawyer friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, what, exactly. what do you fall back on? It's, it's a weird vibe. People uh, have maybe studied for like six years and don't want to do the degree that they got. And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I have the debt too because you tried doing it. So yeah, I'm not trying to advocate. Kids, if you want to go to school, go ahead. I'm not advocating. Do what, you do, do what you love. <laughs> do do what you love. Uh, how do you explain what you do to people who are not familiar? What you do? I'm sure you're in um, the airport. You're sitting in business class. Someone's like, "What do you do?" You know, what do you try? <laughs> it is. It is like one of those things that you'll be like, okay, like. I'm an athlete. You start with like, I'm an athlete. And then they're like, okay, what are you doing? You're like, okay, like I fight professionally. Like, okay, what kind of fighting? Then you go into like mixed martial arts and then they're like, okay, what's mixed martial arts? And, and then I guess like you sometimes for like relativity sake or also that people can understand a little bit better. You're like, okay, cage fighting or UFC or like whatever you need to kind of understand what it is. You would have seen it, I'm sure because of how popular it is. And then, um, I guess the progression of the conversation is just like explaining what it is to me, not necessarily like it's not cage fighting to me, obviously, and it's not brutality to me. To me, it's um, it's an art form and it's a sport. And therefore, I think like once you start having a conversation with someone and, and say like, yeah, like we mix in a whole lot of different martial arts to create our own and express our own um, version of ourselves within the cage and therefore try to come up more superior in a, in a bout, it's sort of just like, um, what's you kind of, I guess, yeah, like elaborate on what it means to you and, and how it's like, how I perceive it in, in comparison to how I guess, guess the average casual fan perceives it. It's sort of just like, I think a lot of time I end up convincing people to either give it a go or like not give it a go as in like go train or, but give it a go as in like watch it or at least like, um, maybe start looking into it more or just having a little bit more of an open mind. I think like a lot of people automatically assume that the fighter or the MMA fighter or whatever, or cage fighter, I guess, is going to be barbaric and less educated and less well-spoken and, and all these things and probably has some sort of sub story as to why they ended up in MMA. Mm. And I think, like, once they speak to me, they're just like, oh, like, I didn't expect someone like yourself to end up in this. And, and it's like, yeah, it's just sort of like, okay, cool. Well, that opens up your mind to maybe see that it's not the sport that you kind of perceive it to be and it's a little bit more than that and for us it's it's not a sport it's like it's our it's our livelihood it's it's our love and it's our passion for this reason because we get to be creative and we get to express ourselves and and all sorts of stuff and i think like that can kind of like really yeah spin people's mindsets around it yeah does the fact that you have to also work as an inadvertent ambassador does that get frustrating it's frustrating, but it's also like, that's what I chose to do. Like that, that mm-hmm. comes with the job. So I'm not necessarily complaining about it. And I, I think that the positive impact I have will definitely outweigh the burden of having to explain it all or having to have these conversations. Like I don't mind having these conversations because actually it's extremely rewarding once I've met with, maybe it's like a parent of a friend of mine or it's a, yeah, like you're saying, like some random person in the airport or um, maybe you're at a, like a dinner party or something and, and everyone's all dressed casual so nobody expects me to come up and be like, oh, what do you do? And they're like, okay, I fight professionally. Like it's it's yeah. very random and I guess left of wing, but at the same time, um, when, once I, it's really rewarding to see like once you finish that conversation and leaving a situation, whatever it is, and, and someone being like, oh, like, I will look into that MMA and I will maybe look like, look at it a lot differently now that I've met someone that does it and yeah. I can understand, I guess, the sacrifices that they've made and, and how, like, um, it, like physically draining and stuff like that it is, then I guess I'll respect it a little bit more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because then it kind of, like, you're almost reaffirming why you love it so much. At least in my case, as a, as a comedian, you're kind of like, yeah, 100%. this is why, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess I guess for us too, I guess artists in a way, you know, we 
we have to have two brains going at once. One is when you practice the art or the art form of the sport, but then you have to also, if you're asked or if someone gives you the question, to explain what you were going through in your mind. And I always thought what you do as an athlete, it's such a different level because you're expending your art form physically and then you have to mentally shift and be like, well, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Like, I always wonder like the, the kind of like, I don't know, the fast twitch brain muscle work. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Of having to shift yeah. from like using your fist to using your, like your, can you walk that through me, that did that for me? I just, fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I guess MMA as a whole is something that you have to balance. So then I guess like once you like look outside of the sport as well, then you have to balance like, like you're saying, the, the mental aspect, the branding of it, the interviews, the it's like all these different aspects that we kind of end up dabbling in and then like the marketing and media work, like it's all sort of like so polar opposites. Like we, yeah, we go to training, I spar, I do rounds and rounds of sparring, I get punched in the face, and then I leave there and maybe I'll do like an interview or maybe I'll have to do like a photo shoot or maybe I have to do like whatever it is. It's like it's, it is a lot of balancing, but I guess like, at the same time, that's sort of what makes it so appealing um, yeah. is that you're just constantly stimulated by different things. Like not only within the sport because you're balancing jujitsu with how much boxing training you're doing with your strength and conditioning, with your road work, with like all these different like aspects of your training. And then you're then on top of that balancing all these different aspects of the whole round game of being an athlete and I guess like the mental aspect and all that sort of stuff. So there's yeah. sort of just like... For me, I know that like I've done boxing camps and I've done Muay Thai fights and I've done Jiu Jitsu comps and stuff like that. And like isolating those individual disciplines has been really rewarding. But I know once I do it for like maybe a month or two, I'm like, okay, like I would love to do something else. So I'd love to like, like go back to MMA and like change it up like this week. I mean, even in boxing camps, I'll do Jiu Jitsu just to like keep my mind like stimulated that I'm like changing yeah. it up. and and not doing the same thing all the, all the time. So I think like that's what makes it so appealing as well as like um, difficult. Yeah, that's like the muscle confusion we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Keep yourself it's going. Because it's very easy to get static, like you were saying, and then to fall into a rut, I guess. And you gotta keep yourself sharp. That is, I'm sorry, I'm blown away by that. Because I, I, I watch like, I would say even more like gaming. I watch like guys on Twitch playing chess or, or Tarkov being like, well, you know, it's a tough match. But I'm like, I can't imagine giving my entire body out to something and possibly being spent if it goes a distance. And then being like, well, what happened in round two? It feels like, 20 years ago <laughs> yeah like, yeah that, it was all a massive blow oh man that that's nuts uh do you do you try to do you schedule unwinding days or do you just know when your body's like i need myself time or you say every friday afternoon i'm chilling out well i do get like it's within my schedule to have like a, a decent break time um like i train midday on sunday and then um not until 6 p.m on monday so that's kind of like my active recovery kind of rest time um but at the same time like I, I i think like the more i went through my career i started to like listen to my body a lot more and prioritize recovery and um being intuitive and stuff because i just sort of felt like mma it's a lot different to a lot of other sports um in the way of like i i think it's a lot more interpretive um like with our training schedules and that kind of thing we can kind of choose like maybe if someone like me who likes striking, like I can kind of choose if I want to do more boxing than I want to do jujitsu. So like um, it sort of is a little bit more up to us um, as an individual athlete. Um, and therefore I think like it's sort of just like figure out what works for you. And, and over time, like trial and error and everything, I figured out kind of what works with me. And therefore I figured out triggers or um, just things that I'm like, okay, that seems like it's a good time to maybe skip that session um, because I had a heavy morning or like whatever it is. And I think putting less pressure on yourself to kind of do the 20, 30 sessions or whatever it is by the end of the week, um, it's not really about racking up numbers. It's really about racking up quality and mm. for your body to be like coping with all of the capacity that you're putting onto it. So like if you're adding load, then you got to like rest in between somehow or whatever it is. So I think like um, as much as I do schedule in a certain days, I am open to – if I have heavy or hard sparring or like maybe I had like a heavy weight session or whatever it is, then yeah. listening to my body and being like, I'm going to take the afternoon off or whatever it may be. So I think like it's, it's really positive in that aspect because 
I know like a lot of other sports or a lot of team sports, like they just have to get there at this time and then finish at this time. And there's no like if, buts or maybe, and that maybe they can sit out the session, but they have to be there and they have to kind of be present. And for us, I guess we can just be like, okay, like I usually do jujitsu on a, on a Wednesday afternoon, but I can skip that session if I have, if I, and then maybe on Thursday I'll do an extra session. I'll like, right. just like balance it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite discipline or muscle group to work out? Like, do you have a favorite anything or just kind of like training is training? Make sure I'm at the best. Yeah, I mean, I do love everything fairly equally, but I, I definitely favor striking. Like, I would, if if someone was like, oh, you can roll for half an hour, you can spar for half an hour, I definitely choose to spar. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, like, I, I really, I've been really enjoying it over the last couple of years boxing um, as an individual aspect um, and kind of just like having incrementing like proper boxing training into my regime like has been really, really good. I think just for my striking, for my balance, for my distance, all of that sort of stuff. And I've noticed so much positive um, things from it. So therefore, like I really think I'll enjoy boxing for a very long time, um, even if I couldn't like roll or whatever it was. Yeah, I, I've tried it once. I was, young, I was young. I was like, I did karate when I was a kid. Because yeah. I wanted to be a Power Ranger. Don't tell nobody that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's up? I did boxing, and um, I, as a left-handed person, like it was, it was different. I was the only left-handed kid in my class, uh, and I kind of blamed it. I'm not saying that would have the only reason why it would suck, <laughs> but it's I felt like it, it, it's a lot harder than people give it credit for. Just the, just the positioning, just uh, to anticipate moves and stuff. Yeah, uh, as I'm sure you already know. Why am I telling you this? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, bro, I actually fought you. Uh, so I, I've noticed over the past year and a half, as as you, can I say, are entering your prime, or if you're not in your prime already, uh, there's a lot of people on that bandwagon. There's a lot of brands that I want to work with, Hollow Point. There are a lot of companies yeah. I want to do it. I don't want you to know financial specifically, but just walk me through this. Going from that part of your stage of career being like, this is this the bonus? This is how I become bona fide? Do the fact that brands come to me mean like I'm on my path? Like, how do you like reckon that with your own development as a fighter? Yeah, I mean, like, especially, especially like you're saying, over the last year, it was like a lot more things started opening up, a lot more opportunities. And it was funny because it's something that I've always been really conscious of branding and, and marketing and, and aligning with certain brands and stuff like that was always something that I really like set out to do from the very get-go but it just never really came together for me until the last year or so like the last at least 18 months I guess um which has been really positive but at the same time I've kind of been learning on the job as well like a lot of the things that I've gotten I've literally gotten myself um there was no manager that was like like speaking to Bose for me there was no manager that was speaking to Disney for me like it was all like it was all very like new and fresh and stuff and I guess like taking um, the lessons and the positives away from last year um, and then moving into 2021 a little bit more professionally and, and navigating things a little bit better, I think will um, allow me to like capitalize on opportunities financially, make more revenue out of these things and, and like move into like bigger brands and continue that kind of thing on. I think like for, for where I'm at in my career, like as a, just a Bellator featherweight, like contender um i'm doing really well with these brands and stuff um in comparison to others and i think like if i i've always i've always had that mentality of like being bigger than just a fighter and, and looking further than that sure. and creating more of an empire rather than just like a individual aspect of, of kind of like fighting and it's more about the legacy and everything like that and so therefore i did want to change the game and open up opportunities for fighters um hopefully like that will yeah trickle down and just and just give others um, the same opportunities that I will. So therefore, I think this year, especially like I'll start really like hitting things even bigger than what I did last year. And then, and then just kind of keep continuing on from there, because at the same time, like you're saying, like I am definitely in my prime um, physically and as an athlete. So I think it's all sort of aligning at the same time, um, doing the branding and the, the fighting and like being at this stage of my career, being this level, like near the title, all that sort of stuff. It's all working kind of well towards what I want to achieve and, and the ultimate goals I set out to do at the start. Yeah, it shows. A lot of the listeners to the show are people doing their own thing, whether they're painters or break dancers. There's always that balance of one, the exciting incident, going to go for it, two, deciding whether or not it's going to be a career or a hobby, and three, not to say like we, it's all about financially driven, but you want to make sure that what you're doing can somehow provide for you and or your family. So it's always cool to see how everyone approaches that. And I, I got to ask you though, with your training also, do you set time to do the branding stuff or does it come as it go? Do you set days aside? Like what's your strategy for that 
I just um, I just plan things. I just make sure, like, I guess I don't really set certain days aside, but I'll just um, sacrifice, not really sacrifice training at all, but I'll just, like, make sure that I've scheduled things in that kind of don't, um, yeah, don't coincide too bad, that nothing clashes. It just sort of has to be, like, planned and make sure that I'm, I'm really, like, utilizing my time to the best of my ability and, and, like, maybe spending a little bit of time doing social media and then maybe doing a little bit of time, like, because I, I work as well. So then it's just, like, you just got to, like, schedule everything. I think keep on top of things and make sure that everything's balanced. And, and um, I, like, I'm, I would never prioritize the marketing and media stuff over top of my training. That would never be sure. the priority because the priority is always being a fighter and, and being good at fighting. Um, but at the same time, just, like, finding that balance. And I, I'm lucky that I can work from remotely from wherever and and i don't have to like sort of sit in an office or or go to a store or whatever it may be so um for that reason i can kind of really schedule everything just make sure like i know that i don't train till 3 p.m today so therefore i've got the morning to do an interview like this and then um move on and and, and do some more stuff behind the scenes so it's just sort of like making sure i guess i schedule things and and have these like um talks i guess with my managers and and etc cetera, etc cetera, sort of just like making a balance yeah, make sure it's part of the, I guess, the diet of time in a weird way. Yes, uh, yeah. it, It's still the beginning of the year, 2021. I'm not sure every person does, does yearly goals or resolutions, but is there anything out there you want to share? That's, uh, I personally it? don't really do goals or resolutions. For the um, year. But, yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I just sort of like, I have intentions, obviously. Yeah. And I think um, that's like an important thing and just to manifest like what you want. And so therefore, like I sort of took all the lessons from last year um and just set my intention for this year this year is obviously going to be one of those years like everyone says it's my year but this is definitely my year yeah, <laughs> it is as well because it is like all those things that we're talking about have aligned so yeah. therefore this is the year that yeah i really hit shit hard like i've been kind of creeping um behind the scenes <laughs> and on the low levels and i've done the hard i've sacrificed a lot of stuff and i've done the no money thing and i've done all of it so yeah. this year is the year that's like yeah finally like these things will kind of come together and i think a lot of people will um get to know my name a little bit more that this year that's for sure and if fans wanted to support you how can they do that like how can they go out there and spread the word you can um all follow me on social media if you'd like to it's janae harding on most platforms twitter facebook and instagram or you can um yeah, tw or Twitch me as well. I am going to start up my Twitch again soon. Like you said, gaming, another aspect. We can do that, play Fortnite and whatnot. Um, and I'm going to get that set up hopefully in the next couple of months. So, yeah. Oh, you're a Fortnite player. That's what's up. I am. <laughs> Yay, you're a Fortnite player. Though. I'm a terrible one, but I do that. It's oh, Fortnite, Overwatch, and Rocket League. I'm a big Rocket League fan. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I need to get that. I'm going to go buy it because I actually really – I played it at my friend's house once, and I was like, Rocket League is mad. <laughs> yeah, it's like soccer with cars. I mean, why not? Uh, do you have Obviously, a great. Yeah, exactly. Thanks do you have a guilty pleasure game? Do you have a game where you're like, I can't believe I love this one, but <laughs> like. Uh, I used to be really diehard of Diablo. Have you ever heard oh, of that? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love Diablo now, but I think once you've done it once or twice, you're like, okay, yeah, we get it. Like, there's only so many Crusaders I can make. But, um, but yeah, I thought, I thought Fortnite's kind of the thing that I never thought that I would like that much. And I like it way more than Warzone. And all my, anyone that's my age is like, Warzone's better, etc. And I'm like, right. it's Fortnite, it's Fortnite, Fortnite's for me. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, you play with 12-year-olds. I'm like, yeah, I do, and it's great. Like, <laughs> and I destroy and them. And the nicest so. people. <laughs> Uh, what, what's your Twitch handle, just for everyone else? Um, Janae Harding. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're not, that came up branding. It's all. Yes, <laughs> it's I all got that stuff. name. I got that individual name, so nobody can steal it. <laughs> That's great. I hope to see more of you, especially in the Twitch space, the real space, and fight space. Uh, and also, if if the people uh, want to check you out on social media, they do that and make sure you get to do whatever you want to do. Your intentions are fulfilled this year for sure. Love that, and straight back at you with your marathons and everything like that.